It always happens that it fails to reconnect right away. But happy Tuesday, everybody. I'm Casey, the events manager here at Fireside, for those of you that don't know me. But I'm super excited to be back. I was gone last week because I had a day off. I know, this actually happened. But it's been a fun week. We have dueling pianos coming up this Saturday, which tickets are sold out. So you can still message me and we might be releasing more if it doesn't rain, but it looks like rain, so no promises yet. But we have that going on. We have our Friday Night Music still happening, which Jeffrey Scott Band Duo is this Friday from 7 to 10. They're amazing. I know I say that about a lot of people, but I adore these two guys. They're super talented, fantastic at what they do. Definitely come check it out. And we have a bunch of new events coming up too. I will talk about those later, but you can always check them out on Facebook because you're already on Facebook, so you might as well look at what we have coming up. But back to our Tuesday talk, back to the wine. Today, we are going to learn how to properly taste wine. I say properly in air quotes because this is like your correct actual way to observe a wine, see how good it is, technically describe it to people so they know what they're tasting. But however you taste wine, whatever works best for you, again, go for it, go for that way. But there are four main steps that you should probably do every time you taste the wine and we're just going to kind of walk through those. So today I'm going to taste our Fireside Frontenac 2017 Vintage. It's one of my favorites, but I've never actually done full on notes for it. So I decided that would be fun to do today and I did, which these are my lovely notes. I take a lot of notes on wines. It's how you know what they taste like, what they smell like, all that good stuff, but we'll get there. So your first step, no matter what, is you're gonna look at the wine. I know that seems super simple, but when I say look, I mean observe the intensity, the color, if it's clear or hazy. Usually it's clear, if it's hazy, you might have a problem or it's a natural wine. But observe your wine, a little plus or a little tip on this. Put it over a plain white sheet of paper with natural lighting above or neutral, and then hold your glass at like 45, 60 degree angle, and then look down through it. So right now mine is gonna be a pretty clear medium garnet. I'd go garnet just because it's a little bit deeper red than your rubies, but rubies definitely your main color for reds. White's obviously different color spectrum, but reds are gonna be your rubies, purple, garnet, tawny if it's older. Whites are going to be more of your green, lemon, most of wines are lemon, hay, those sorts of things. You don't really get that much that often. But there you go. First step done. You looked at the wine. Super easy and you already learned that it's probably not going to be that old because it doesn't have that little rim around it. So next you have your nose or your smell per usual. This is, honest to God, one of the most important parts of tasting wine. A lot of people don't spend as much time on it, but you taste, taste more through your nose than you do with your mouth. So it's like 60-40%, 60% with your nose, 40% with your actual tongue and swallowing, that sort of thing. So do a nice little swirl. This is going to look real cool too now, everybody. So. And then just smell. Go like, take as many times as you need, do short little sniffs, or just do a long one, go one side of your nose, other side of your nose. Your smell will take time to develop. Like I've gone to grocery stores and gone up to like strawberries and just smelled them. Mangoes, random flowers, you go up to those things and then you have that sense memory of what that smells like. I had no idea what, a like cranberry smelled like in a jam until I smelled cranberry jam. And now I can smell that in wine. So what I get out of our Frontenac, it's a pretty intense wine. So it's really fruity. You have a lot of red raspberry, plum, blackberry. There's a sort of jamminess to it. And because, yeah, because it is oaked, not that much, but it's lightly oaked. 
You add a little bit of smoke to it, a little bit more of your like clovey baking spices, not a huge amount, but a little bit of that. So yeah, I would aim, always aim for like five smells. And these can be fruit, from the oak, from aging, all those sorts of things. And again, you'll learn as you keep trying more, which is an excuse to try more wine. I don't think any of us need excuses to try more wine, but it's fun to have one. So now we get to our second part, which is tasting the wine. So you're gonna take a pretty big mouthful of it. And then this is also gonna look really cool. Kidding, that was sarcasm. You take a big gulp, but don't swallow it quite yet. Switch it all around in your mouth. And you can even do the little like sip thing in to get the oxidation in on your mouth. I won't do that because I don't, I'm not so good at it yet. It kind of comes out the other way, but you do that, swallow, and then breathe in through your mouth and out through your nose. So you get those retronasal smells that come from your little esophagus here and then out your nose. So that will be another way to pick up on smells, pick up on taste. So let's have at this. Breathe in. That's insane. I did this earlier, so just I would have my notes down. But you get so much more smoke when you breathe out. And I get this like really intense butterscotch taste and flavor that I don't get when you smell it. So that's why you have to do all these little steps so you get that full length. And then another thing when we taste, we're not just tasting the flavor profile, we're tasting for sweetness. Is it dry? Or we're tasting for acidity. We're tasting for body, alcohol, tannin, if they have it, usually only in red wines, sometimes in white, not a big deal in there. And like the finish of it, is it full bodied? Is it a long finish? Is it a short finish? That's what we're trying to go for when we taste wines. So, we'll do this again. Front neck's pretty darn dry. It's not overly acidic, and that's when your mouth starts to water. If it's really acidic, like your Pinot Grigios or Sauvignon Blancs, then your mouth is gonna water almost instantly. But mine's a little bit, not too much, so medium acidity. And then I'll just explain tannin too. Tannin comes from the grape skins and the seeds and the oak if we use it. So that's kind of what makes your mouth dry out and feel like sandpaper. And when your lips, the back of your lips and your teeth start to like stick together, that's the effect of tannin. So it's not, just a little bit, not too much. I'd go more medium, I'd go really good with a nice pork chop. That sounds fantastic right now. So again, I get those Black cherry, fig flavors, still red raspberry, super fruity, but that's the front neck grape for you. So that's how you taste the wine. And then your fourth step, which we should always do, so you create that sense memory of the wine, it's to think about it and make conclusions about it. So this one, we all know it's one of my favorites, but it's super good, but you can drink it now and you can also age it. Not forever, please do not age your front neck for 10 to 15 years. But you can age it for another year, two years, three. Give it a shot. But once you get better at creating the things that you take notes on or the things that you internally take notes on for wine, you'll create that memory of what you like, what you don't like, and then you'll be able to buy wines better in the store or explain to people at wineries what you like instead of what you don't like. And then you'll just be better at tasting the wine, pairing them with everything, all of that good stuff. So again, that's basically it. That's how you taste wine. Your four steps are look, smell, taste, think. Super easy, just four little things. And the more you try, the better you'll get at it. So again, this is my note sheet now. 
So when I first started, I pretty much didn't take notes on wine at all. I just drank them and I'm like, hey, that tastes good. But now I get really into it because I'm a wine nerd, but it's super fun. Keep trying wine. You don't have to be this intense with it again. Taste wines how you like. Taste wines how it works for you. So that's pretty much how you taste wine. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you go grab a glass of wine. If not right now, do it later. Teach other people, have parties with your friends and compare what you guys all think about the wines and you'll be surprised at how different your opinions are. But that is it for my Tuesday. I'm gonna finish this because it's fantastic. And let me know if you're liking these, if you wanna see anything else. You guys come into the winery and you're like, hey, you're the girl on Facebook. And I'm like, yep, I sure am. So some of you guys are watching, which is exciting. And we will be back next Tuesday, hopefully with something else really fun. Maybe we'll tour another of our stores. But I will see you guys all later. Have a fantastic Tuesday and a fantastic week. Bye. Yeah, it's not good.